Good morning, guys. Uh, conventional corn. Let's look at the conventional corn cash flow for owned land. Um, the numbers came from 226 farms. 226 farms, northeastern uh, section of Minnesota. There's our beef, our conventional beef. That's going to be the, whether it's on the lot or pasture. This is not true grazing herd. This would be the guys that that old hay field got turned into pasture. Uh, the cows only have a, a month and a half or two good months of grazing. Otherwise, the rest of the year is, is hauling feed to the cows. Um, and, and you working for them kind of deal. And so then we had our, our minus $19 loss. Um, so 226 farms. They had an average of 160 bushel to the acre, and they have an average price of $3.08 for corn. Um, so your, your normal direct input stuff, your seed 92, fertilizer 96, chemicals and fuel, both at 26. I know for myself in 2018 that uh, I am double that 96. How did I end up there? I don't know. It got away from me. <laughs> I tried a new uh, fertilizer program. We switched from dry to liquid, and uh, I kept my units per acre the same, so I could get a handle on how the liquid program works. Now that we've seen the results, now moving forward, we can start pulling back and uh, not having fun, but pulling back to see, okay, how can we find the cash flow on this? Um, so by the time you figure in drying, storing, trucking, labor, repairs, insurance, and interest, all your direct costs, anything associated with putting the crop in, maintaining the crop, and getting the crop out, um, paying for the combine to go through the corn, but not paying the combine payment kind of deal, uh, all that stuff. Uh, come up to a 357, basically a $360 an acre cost uh, for $166 return. When we get into our depreciation of $60, interest of $55 per acre, your property taxes, your insurances, equipment leases, utilities, all that other stuff comes up to another $180 an acre, which gives us the minus $14. Um, so that's conventional corn. If you had rented ground, um, rented ground was 280 farms. 280 farms and the rented ground lost about $60 per acre. Not my numbers. If you're a conventional farm moving into 2019, what are you going to do different? If you want five to show up on the calculator, you can't keep hitting two plus two. It, it, it doesn't work. You can't keep doing the same thing over and over again. If your plan for next year is to just pray for a great yield or count on a good yield, that's not a very safe plan. Um, you you, you got to really do some pretty good self-talks. I'm having a lot of self-talks looking at next year and the next couple years as to what the heck are we going to do? How are we going to get by? Do I need to go back to the cities for work? It's not easy. We need to do something different next year. If you plan on next year doing the exact same thing that you did in 2017 and 18 to give you that minus 14, how can you expect anything different in 19? Other than maybe you did a really great job on already locking in your 2019 prices, um, that can help. But you know you've got a you've got an average yield for a reason, and that's what you need to bank on. You can't go to your bank and say, "Well, I'm going to get 190 bushel corn next year," when you have a farm average of 150 over 10 years. The bankers probably not going to allow it. Maybe he will. Maybe you sweet talk him. Maybe you're too big to fail. I, I don't know what your scenario is. I'm just asking the question, what are you going to do for 2019? Clearly, doing the same thing over isn't going to work. Um, so yeah, what am I going to do for 2019? I have no freaking idea. Actually, I got a couple good ideas and... Uh, 
that fertilizer bill of mine to go from 190 something or 150 something wherever we were at we're gonna we're really gonna knock him down uh this fertilizer being that cheap that tells me that guys were simply not putting down P and K. They were putting down their nitrogen and sulfur, and they literally put just a wisp of P and K because locally, um, yeah, that that that's a hundred bushel, hundred and ten, hundred and twenty bushel corn fertility program. Um, you know, so working a guy to find money. So the channel moving forward, um, we're gonna start having some fun. Let's have some fun. Soybeans. Oh, before we go, soybeans. If you're wondering how conventional soybeans turned out, I'm not going to do another chart for conventional soybeans, but conventional soybeans made almost $40 an acre on owned ground. Um, there you go. Maybe moving forward in 19, you have a heart to heart with yourself and say, yep, markets don't look great, but if I can lock in an $8 and $8.50 right now on 40 bushel beans, can I put the whole farm to beans and actually pay my bills? Plain simple. Can I walk away at the end of the year and pay my bills so my grain system, the dryer doesn't fire up one year? That's okay. Uh, gives you time to do some maintenance on that stuff too. Um, so there's there's some there. So now the channel moving forward from here, the next scenarios, let's have some fun that what if this corn guy, so obviously if beans made a profit, the beans are carrying the corn for the year unless the corn had a great yield. Um, but what if we, let's do some scenarios of bringing in diversification. So instead of corn and beans, we bring in a field of hay or a field of cereals or, or something. Um, instead of having conventional cows, let's bring back the cover crop grazing, but let's look at the alternatives of the cover crop grazing on a per acre basis. We know these cows for sure need three acres per cow. Pretty Pretty simple, the same book that's going to give me these numbers are also telling us the, the three acre per cow average. Um, so let's run some scenarios where we bring in the cover grazing and uh, run the scenario that since the cows are on the field all day, um, we'll, we'll, we'll have a herd of, of 100 cows or something. And so if they're on the field all day, can the guy get an off-farm job? Can he run more acres? Can he sell more hay? Blah, 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 blah. Can you run 30% more cattle? because of the, the cover crop scenario. On row crops, what if we bring in a hay field versus corn and beans? Can we bring in some cash flow on that? Um, and so, yeah, between the book, between the banker's book, we can, uh, we can run some different scenarios. I don't even know if this has hay production costs in here. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. But I will find some, yep, we have alfalfa on rented acres and uh, so we can we can bring in some alfalfa numbers and we can make a farm a third of corn beans hay see how it cash flows to just the corn and uh, so let's have some fun moving forward hopefully guys hopefully these videos are getting you to start thinking about yourself and having some honest talks with yourself and your banker and your accountant whether you're just making money hand over fist good for you um, God bless. <laughs> if you're like the rest of us, that you're always one day away from going back to the cities for work. Um, let's keep fighting together because uh, we know our costs. When we're walking around the farm. We know our direct seed costs, our fertilizer, our fuel. We know all that stuff. We don't need an accountant to tell us what we did there. But our depreciation and interest, them other costs, they can get out of hand, and we have no clue who's walking around their farm and looking at a tractor thinking, huh, that thing cost me 15 bucks an acre in depreciation. Look at that stupid grain auger. That thing cost me $4 an acre in depreciation. None of us are walking around doing that. None of us are walking around with our property taxes and our interest and insurances being like, huh, Oh, way to go. There goes another $80 an acre. Stupid people, blah, 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 blah. We're not, no, we're not doing that. Um, so that's where a good QuickBooks program with your accountant comes in. That's my plea to you guys. If you're not on QuickBooks, get QuickBooks. Get your accountant to help you set up. Use YouTube for tutorial videos. Get it going for you so you can start tracking your numbers. Build your own balance sheets. 
And uh, then you got numbers. You can start to give yourself some summaries from each year to build good projections. Um, but yeah, so moving forward, let's just have hypotheticals and fun scenarios and uh, see what we can't do. So guys, thanks for watching today. We will see you on the next video.